let's now go back to integration. What we study in this video are improper integrals of the first type. So these are definite integrals but for which the interval of integration is actually infinite. So let me start with a motivational example. Suppose that a chemical is being produced at a rate of e to the minus t moles per second. So I've got a nice little graph here uh, where I've just plotted the rate of production of the chemical. Now if I ask you to calculate what the amount of chemical produced between times t equals to zero and t equals capital T is, well, you probably know how to do it. What you want to do is just integrate the rate of production between t equals to zero and t equals capital T. And this is certainly something you can do. You get minus e to the minus t between zero and capital T which is just minus e to the minus capital T minus minus e to the zero, or in other words, one minus e to the minus capital T. That is the exact amount of chemical which is produced between these two times. All right, but if I ask you the following, what is the amount of chemical produced if the experiment ran forever? That's a good question. Now you may be tempted to say, well, it's got to be infinite. If I keep running the experiment, uh, there's going to be an infinite amount of chemical produced. That's not so obvious. What you want to calculate here, so the way, what, the way we can formulate mathematically what we're trying to calculate would be as an integral, but now between times t equals to zero and t equals infinity, that's what forever means mathematically, right? You let t go to infinity of e to the minus t dt. So somehow this is what we want to calculate. But how can we make sense of that? How can we calculate that mathematically? Now you can also look at it geometrically. What this means is that we're trying to calculate the area under the curve, but all the way to infinity. Is that infinite or is that finite? Good question. So let's try to define what this is mathematically. This is exactly what an improper integral of the first type is. So those are definite integrals where the interval of integration is infinite. So how do we define that mathematically? Well, if you have the, an integral which exists for all t greater or equal to a, you define the improper integral here as being the limit, as t goes to infinity, of this definite integral. So you let the upper limit of integration uh, run to infinity. Now, of course, you can do the exact same thing for the lower limit, where you let it go to minus infinity. And that's another type of improper integrals. But now there's a good question. There's a limit involved. So this may not exist. The limit does not always exist. Right? It could be finite, but it could also be infinite. So we have to distinguish between these two cases. So we say that these improper integrals are convergent if the limit exists, and it is divergent if it does not exist. So by exists here, we mean it's a finite number. So if it's infinite, then uh, the integral is divergent. All right, so we can also uh, define improper integrals where both limits of integration run to infinity. So this is how we would define that. So if uh, on both sides the integral is convergent, then we can define the integral between minus infinity to infinity as just being the sum of the two. And in fact, of course, any real number a can be used here. The left-hand side will just be the same. Okay, so these are uh, improper integrals. So let's go back to our problem and try to evaluate now the uh, amount of chemical which is produced if you let the experiment run forever. So we want to calculate this integral. But now we know how to do it. So this improper integral is defined as being the limit. So then we call the upper limit of integration x. So the limit as x goes to infinity of the integral between 0 and x e to the minus t dt. So this is the limit as x goes to infinity. So this integral we've already evaluated in the first slide. That was 1 minus e to the minus x. So we want to evaluate now this limit. But as x goes to infinity, e to the minus x goes to 0, so this is exactly equal to 1. So it turns out that in this case, the amount of chemical produced is not infinite, it's exactly 1 mole, which is pretty cool. And similarly, from the geometric point of view, what that means is that the area under this exponential curve here, even if you go all the way to infinity, remains finite, and the area here is exactly equal to 1. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's do a second example. Suppose that you want to calculate the integral between 1 and infinity of the function 1 over x. Well, we can do that again. This is the limit as, let me now call it t, 
t goes to infinity, infinity of the indefinite integral between 1 and t of 1 over x dx can certainly integrate this function. So the integral of 1 over x is just ln of x, 1 and t. So this is the limit as t goes to infinity of ln of t minus ln of 1. But of course, ln of 1 is just 0. So I end up with the limit as t goes to infinity of ln of t, but this is just infinite. So in this case, it turns out that the improper integral here diverges. In the previous case, it converged because we got 1, but here it diverges because it's not the limit does not exist, so it's infinite. Now what's quite interesting is that if you sketch the graph of the function here, 1 over x, it looks very similar to the function that we had before, but it's slightly different. And now it's got a very di different behavior. So if this is 1 and you uh, calculate this integral, what you're actually calculating is the area here under the curve all the way to infinity. Now in the previous case, in the exponential case, it turned out that this area was finite. In this case, it turns out that this area, even though it looks very, very similar, is actually infinite. So it's not obvious. Just looking at a graph, it's very hard to see whether improper integrals will be finite, uh, will converge or not. So you really have to evaluate the limits carefully and figure out whether they're finite or infinite, uh, or in other words, whether the improper integral converges or diverges.